in these few days, everyone is very tense, uh, very um, um, concerned about what is going on in uh, Japan with the reactors first, with the, um, all this tsunami and, um, and um, earthquake. And uh, so there's a lot of um, uh, inquiries. And uh, to the extent that I wasn't able to do anything uh, but answering questions all day long. So uh, I think maybe it's a, a better idea for me to give the background of uh, uh, the events as I understand it and uh, give you uh, the interested, peop uh, the interested uh, um, a report on the, uh, what I think is going on. Um, so, um, well, let me, let me, uh, well, of course, I mean, the world needs energy to run. And um, so that's why we have nuclear electricity is, uh, I and uh, nuclear electricity, ah, uh, essentially for the, um, um, for most of you who, who, who probably haven't, um, have an in have a uh, and have come across nuclear electricity before. Nuclear electricity is nothing uh, but it's just like a conventional power plant where you burn coal uh, with a boil or a, with a boiler of water and then generate steam and the steam tur pushes a turbine and generate electricity and then you can watch your TV at home. And um, but I mean in the case of the power plant. And you have the same thing. You have got a, 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 I mean a, a nuclear fuel in here, in a nuclear reactor, and then it generates the steam and then, uh, and, and then pushes the turbine and uh, give rise to uh, give you electricity. And the effect is the same, and you won't be able to tell whether this is, is nuke electricity or whether this is coal electricity or anything else. And... Uh, so where does this energy come from? I mean, electri electricity, I mean, nuclear, uh, we, we talk about the, the nuclear electricity. Actually, the energy source comes from nuclear fusion, uh, fission. And the nuclear fission is when you have a neutron, you strike into some a uranium or a plutonium or some of these uh, relatively unstable uh, atoms, then it splits and then it generates more neutrons and, and, and uh, and uh, more neutrons will, will, will split more uranium and, and give rise to a chain reaction and give, rise, give up give the energy. And in fact, these energies um, can be, uh, is usually, is 90% of it in the, in the form of uh, fission neutron heat. So um, uh, you have got a neutron and then it's, it, 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 the fission gives rise to more neutrons and in the water, it, 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 it moderates it. And in the moderation process, uh, two things happen. One is that is the neutrons slow down, uh, allowing it to be able to, uh, to uh, split other atoms. And the second thing is to give up its energy, in the, give up its kinetic, uh, its, uh, um, its speed, and, um, um, and, 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 and make, the hot, make the water hot. And this water, 90, over 90% of the heat is generated this way uh, from neutrons. And uh, of course, these neutrons, uh, this kind of uh, heat will stop when the reactor shuts down. Okay, when the uh, the chain reaction is cut, when the, or when the neutrons get absorbed and it's cut down. And and I'll talk about that uh, more later on. But there is another part of the of the um, of the um, um, another part of the uh, heating process, which is the lead reactor in the presence fiasco. And this is the radioactive uh, decay heat. And radioactive decay heat is um, uh, when you have got uh, an unstable nucleus, it will keep on decaying until it rises to a stable uh, element, um, which is lead. And all these, tran uh, th these transient elements, they are all um, very nasty. And they, they all these unstable, they generate alpha, beta, gamma radiation and, have a, and give you a lot of problem. And another characteristic of it is that they have very varied uh, half-lives. The half-lives, some are in days, some in minutes, but some are in, this is something like uh, 10 to the 4th, uh, 10,000 years, all right? So um, during the radioactive decay, 
is, uh, e so in the beginning, the nuclear fuels, even you can touch it. And uh, if you wear a, 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 a glove, you can hold the, uh, these uh, fuels, in, you can hold the fuels in your hand and uh, put in the, the, the fuel pellet. But once it gets into the reactor, once the, the fission starts, then you generate all this nasty material, and these materials is what causes all this radioactivity. And, um, and, 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 and it will stick to your clothes, and then, uh, or if you ingest this kind of stuff, it will become uh, very serious. So, uh, now, at the heart of nuclear operation, we have got three things which is very important. And the first of all is the control of the fission process. That is to say, you put it, you, you have to turn it on, you have to turn it off, and you have to adjust the power. How do you do that? And, and the operators are essentially doing this kind of thing. And uh, the second part of it, which is extremely most important, are the cooling system. The cooling system uh, it consists of the pumps, the valves, and the pipes. And we'll, we're, I, I, when we keep on going, we'll see why cooling is so important. And then the third one is the waste management, which is, consists of the spent fuel uh, management. Um, and these three parts are the, the heart of the uh, reactor operation. Of course, there are many others, uh, but I, I don't want to confuse you. Um, so some of these, the, 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 it, I mean, to explain these uh, operations, we can s look at some of these uh, reactor. Um, um, th this is a, a pressurized water reactor, various types of reactors. And uh, the, the, the nice thing about this reactor is, uh, is that it's more compact. And uh, it's got, uh, it, it, because it's compact, we, you can put in a lot of um, uh, protective shelves. But the problem of this kind of reactor is that there's a, a lot of piping and a lot of components, and, uh, and therefore it's easy to, uh, to, uh, um, to have problem. So and, and another thing to notice is to look at these, these kind of um, uh, components. This is a person, and this is the steam generator and the pump. And this pump itself weighs, two, uh, weighs 200,000 pounds. That's how gigantic these things are. And why these things have to be so gigantic is because it has to move water at a gigantic rate to cool the system. Right? And um, the cooling of the system is extremely important, both from the safety point of view and from the operation point of view. In, in terms of operation, that is what uh, pushes all this uh, heat uh, to be, to be uh, transferred um, to the to to move the uh, um, the uh, to get into the uh, to move the um, um, the turbine and, and generate electricity, but I mean from the uh, from this uh, from the uh, safety point of view is that the it keeps the temperature down and uh, keeps the reactor safe, uh, keeps the pressure down, keeps the temperature down, keeps the chemical reaction uh, with uh, zirconium down, and that is what we will be talking about later on. And this is another type of reactor, which is called he a pressurized heavy water reactor. The nice thing about this type of reactor is, uh, is uh, it's, it uses natural uranium as the fuel. There's no enrichment at all. And, um, and why it can do it? Because it uses heavy water as a moderator and makes it much more efficient. And another nice thing about this type of reactor is because it's, uh, it does not have a big uh, boiler, it, all the boilers are contained in the so-called the fuel channels. These are the fuel channels. The water goes in here and gets heated up in, in individual channels. Yeah, these are all the channels. And, and because they are in channels, the fuel, you can change the fuel online. I mean, uh, no, you don't need to do it. You uh, do it all, all at once, like uh, in uh, other reactors.